Now, we all know that Ilsa was killed at the end of Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS, but did you know that she survived being killed and went on to be the harem keeper of some oil sheiks? <laughs> it's true. It's inexplicable, it's illogical, it's unbelievable, but it's true. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Ilsa, Harem Keeper of the Oil Sheiks from 1976. This is a follow-up to the infamous and surprisingly successful Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, but the director wanted to ride that success wave to a larger audience, so Harem Keeper is a bit toned down in the uh, nasty violence, uh, but uh, the good news is it's a bit toned up in terms of nudity. <laughs> That's a fine trade for me. The idea was to try to secure an R rating, but don't worry, there's still plenty of sick violence if you're into that thing, as you should be. And the women in this movie are gorgeous. In fact, uh, you'll recognize most of them, especially if you, like me, are a big fan of Russell Albion Meyer. Alright, let's take a look at the movie. We open, where else? In the desert, and a helicopter is delivering something. The truck is loaded and its contents are taken to Ilsa. Oh, and hey, check it out, that beggar there? That's George Buckflower. Uh, we last saw him on this channel in Delinquent Schoolgirls, but honestly, he's in pretty much every crazy exploitation film from the 1970s. Anyway, Ilsa says the master will be pleased, and then we hop over to that master, El Sharif, getting a massage. And I can't show you much of that massage because the massageur is topless. Well, mostly topless. Uh, her top is covered by oil, but that's not the kind of covering YouTube wants. I do want to point out, though, that this massager is Sue Ling, whose only other film credit is in Russ Meyer's film, Up. Next, we find out what was delivered by that helicopter, and it was people. Beautiful people. In the first box is Colleen Brennan. We know her. She's been on this channel loads of times, including in Russ Meyer's Super Vixens. Box number two contains Ushi de Guard, and anyone who watches my channel knows who that is. And if you don't know who that is, shame on you. You've got some work to do to educate yourself properly. Go watch Super Vixens, and then Cherry, Harry, and Raquel, and then maybe Truck Stop Women. You can thank me later. Box number three is, well, Ilsa says it's Eilina Cordova, and if you look on IMDb or any other website that has a cast list for this movie, you'll see that Eilina Cordova is played by Haji, except that's not Haji. But Haji is in this movie, she'll show up a bit later, bringing the total number of Russ Meyer women in this film up to four. Man, that's cool. This is like an honorary Russ Meyer film. Anyway, let's get into the plot. Uh, that's why we're really here, right? The plot? Like, a story? Or do you just want to watch Russ Meyer women run around? <laughs> I'm fine either way. Okay, so Ilsa informs these uh, recruits uh, that they're now part of the harem of El Sharif. And again, that third recruit, notice, that's not Haji. How come I'm the only one on the internet that is noticing this? Am I the only one that still watches these movies? That's sad. But whatever. El Sharif is sitting on an ocean of oil, and the Americans are none too pleased that he isn't pumping more of it out. He's giving them a trickle, they want a torrent, so they're coming to negotiate. And they aren't afraid to introduce a little blackmail into those negotiations. El Sharif likes the fact that the Americans are coming to beg him for more oil, but he's a little bit worried they might stumble upon his white slavery ring, so he's going to organize a slave auction. Yeah, he wants to unload some of his wares before the Americans get there. The slave auction will come up soon. First, Ilsa has to dispense some discipline. He wins, he will be pardoned. It will be hand-to-hand -hand combat. Unfortunately, I can't show you this fight because YouTube doesn't like oiled up <laughs> kicking And that's fine, I guess. Uh, but I do want to point out that we've seen one of these ladies before in the channel. Uh, Tani Boyd was in Black Shampoo. Okay, well, the hotties win their fight in spectacular fashion. Welcome to my company of eunuchs. And after a bunch of stuff I can't show you, uh, oil massages, tongue practice, obese naked women eating oatmeal, uh, you know, all kinds of weird and interesting things, uh, we get to this auction. 
Oh, and just as an aside on that oatmeal thing, this is the earliest example I can think of of a movie like this that explores, at least to a certain extent, the feeder. F uh, if you can think of an earlier one, let me know. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Okay, anyway, the auction. Oh, hey, look, that belly dancer, that's Haji. Uh, we find out she's actually an agent sent there by one of the Americans. She's trying to uncover some evidence of wrongdoing in order to punish El Sharif uh, because he uh, previously uh, tortured and killed her family. A belly dancer with a backstory. Uh, that's new for this channel. Okay, so the Americans arrive, but Ilsa and El Sharif are on to their blackmail scheme. And that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. Well, highlight number one is there's a lot of in this movie. And when it's not covered by bloody wounds, it's covered by oil, which is pretty hot. Especially since a lot of it comes from some Russ Meyer women. Oh yeah, nice. Colleen Brennan has never looked better. O Ushi, of course, is a goddess. Haji, we love her. The other harem women, Tiny Boyd, awesome stuff. On the nasty side of things, if you like your torture scenes, we've got some here. Of course, it's nothing like She Wolf of the SS, but we do have some. Uh, we've got some squeezing and some ants. Oh, my personal favorite is the <laughs> triggered belly bomb that Ilsa demonstrates for El Sharif, the machine she built to test it is pretty cool. And finally, at the end of this film, there's this pretty well done action sequence. Of course, I mean, this is a really low budget movie. In fact, it's so low budget that many times they could only do one take because they just didn't even have the money for film stock. So, you know, with those kinds of limitations in mind, that action sequence at the end, pretty damn cool. But the movie's not perfect. Like the Sheik playing with one of his concubines, it has some shortcomings. Well, like I said in the highlights, there is a lot of in this movie, and the fact that a lot of it comes from Russ Meyer alumni is all the better. But there's not nearly enough of Diane Thorne, uh, who, by the way, would have fit in perfectly into a Russ Meyer film. I mean, she does get undressed in this movie uh, in two scenes. Uh, neither one's very good. It's not nearly enough of her. I mean, it's an Ilsa movie. Give me some Ilsa. In fact, I think Jess Franco was disappointed with this too because when he did his Ilsa film the following year, the first thing he did was put Diane Thorne in a bubble bath. Thank you, Jess Franco. You know what we want. But this isn't Franco's film. Uh, I'll talk about his another time. Let's get back to this film. Beyond that, there's not really a lot to complain about here. This is an ultra sleazy movie in terrible taste, but you gotta love the cast. And overall, it's just super fun. I mean, I do wish it had more Diane Thorne, but it does have all of those great Russ Meyer women, so I can't complain too much. And the fact that those Russ Meyer women spend most of the time <laughs> means I shouldn't complain at all. 